Well, hello everybody. Uh, thank you for being here today. My name is Michael Frey and I'm the principal at Grand Blanc High School and we're thrilled to welcome everybody to our campus uh, for this Gift of Life press conference. Um, we're in our new athletic facility, which is just under a year old. Um, it's a beautiful space. We're so fortunate to have it and, and we're glad to share it with, with all of you today. Um, it's my pleasure uh, to, again, be a part of this press conference today and I'm happy that we're hosting the Gift of Life of Michigan, Eversight, uh, Secretary Benson, and State Representative uh, Brabick on our campus. Uh, I know um, I'd now like to actually pass this on and welcome the President and CEO of the Gift of Life Michigan, uh, Ms. Dory Dills, to the podium uh, to share a little bit more about our event today. Thank you, Principal Frey, and welcome everyone. Um, it's, I'm delighted to be here. It's a gorgeous day. Mm -hmm. uh, this is why we survive winters in Michigan, <laughs> isn't it? Um, and this campus is stunning. Congratulations on that. I'm also thrilled to welcome Representative Brayback and um, thank you to the school for hosting us. Gift of Life Michigan is the state's organ and tissue donor program and we have the unique privilege to work with donors and their families as donors make their final gifts um, to individuals who are waiting for organ and tissue transplants and we're humbled and honored to do that every single day. Um, we're also uh, well known, if you will, for our All of Us school program, which I know the students here at Grand Blank, Grand Blank have in experienced, and uh, we have some of our educators with us today. But that program is an award-winning, unique program that educates students about the need for organ and tissue donation, and we get rave reviews when students have an opportunity to sit in on that, uh, that class. We're also here because it's April, and for us that means Donate Life Month. And it's a holiday or, or recognition across the country where organizations like ours um, really continue to raise awareness, even more awareness than we do on, on regular times, um, by having community events, press conferences like this, opportunities to be in hospitals and raise Donate Life flags all across the state of Michigan to encourage people to sign up in the registry. And it really is an opportunity to bring awareness and hope uh, for those who are waiting for an organ transplant. Above all, our goal is to grow the donor registry. We're hoping that individuals who um, want to be donors will sign up in the Michigan Organ Donor Registry and join the more than 4.5 million people who've already, already done so. The, the truth is the need for an organ transplant far exceeds what the uh, available organs are. In fact, right now in Michigan, there are 2,500 people whose lives are hanging in the balance waiting for that gift to come. And, um, and they, some of them, their uh, time is running short for sure. So it's a perfect time to uh, talk about our um, efforts and our education program in particular. One of the things that we're focused on this year is our teen drivers. And we know here in Michigan that teens, when they go to get their driver's licenses, do not sign up at the same rate as, as the states around us. And we know that that's not because teens aren't as giving as other teens in other states. In fact, I, I would venture to guess that's absolutely not true. But what we do believe is that they don't have, they lack the, the critical information and the knowledge that they need in order to say yes to that, to that question when they are um, posed that at the Secretary of State's office. And the reason that we believe that is the case is that they don't have a formal education program. The surrounding states, um, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, all have state requirements that ninth graders receive one hour of education about organ and tissue donation. And as a result, they have twice as many teens who sign up to be organ donors. And that's something that we're working on this year with Representative Brayback's help to introduce legislation that will require that education here in Michigan. And we'll talk more about that in a moment. It's now my pleasure, though, to introduce Colin Ross from Eversight. Uh, Eversight's an organization that works to save and restore sight throughout the world and throughout the United States. And um, they do so through cornea and eye donation. They're a tremendous partner with us in helping us raise awareness and to grow the Michigan Organ Donor Registry. Colin is the Vice President of Partner Relations and Global Development. So Colin.
Thank you, Dory. And thank you to Gift of Life and to Secretary Benson for bringing everyone here today during Donate Life Month with the common goal to advance our life-changing mission in Michigan schools. As Dory mentioned, Eversight serves as Michigan's eye bank. We make it possible for donors and their families to give the precious gift of sight through eye donation, cornea transplantation, and vision research. Last year, Eversight made eye donation possible for nearly 2,100 Michigan donors and their families. Their selfless decision restored sight to more than 1,400 Michiganders. Their gifts also provided for more than an additional 1,400 tissues for critical eye and vision research and for surgical education and training around the world. I have been fortunate in my role with Eversight to travel internationally working with like-minded people from all cultures and socioeconomic backgrounds to make vision a reality worldwide. And in doing this work, it is clear that people from all walks of life are motivated to help one another and hungry for the knowledge to do so. Michiganders of all ages are thirsty for the truth and want to find meaning in the world around them. We have a responsibility to educate teens on eye, organ, and tissue donation as they are presented with the donor registry question. With our help, they can better understand the life-changing process of donation and transplantation and not fear it. There are more than 2,500 people, as Dory mentioned, waiting for a life-saving transplant in Michigan, and millions more globally are in need of sight-restoring cornea transplantation. The best way to transform lives and provide hope to all of these people in need is to grow the donor registry. Empowering teens and all Michiganders to make a fully informed choice to join the registry fosters compassionate, selfless communities across our state. Let us all check our hearts and choose to leave a lasting legacy for those in need of eye, organ, and tissue donations. We must work together to educate and empower one another with the common goal to save and heal lives. Every registration is a priceless gift that may literally change someone's world forever. I am proud to advocate for this work and support every effort to educate our students and grow the registry. Knowledge is power and it takes all of us to change lives. Thank you. Thank you, Colin, and thank you for your ongoing partnership. We uh, appreciate it very much. It's now my pleasure to welcome and introduce our very special guest, Secretary Jocelyn Vincent, Secretary of State Jocelyn Vincent. Thank you, Dorian. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, well, good morning, everyone. I'm really grateful to be here today to both highlight the important work being done by Gift of Life Michigan under the great leadership of Dory Dills, and also to help celebrate National Donate Life Month. In 20, the 2024 Donate Life Month theme is Donors Are Superstars. And I know the people here today and the stories they can all share really are a testament to that. But there's also, as Dory laid out, still an urgent need for organ donation in our state. Because while over 9,000 Michigan patients have received a life-saving organ transplant in the past 10 years, in this moment, more than 2,500 people in the state are waiting for an organ, or on the waiting list for an organ. I'll also share that in the United States, people of color are four times as likely to develop kidney failure as Caucasians, but they are much less likely to receive a life-saving kidney transplant. In fact, only 35% of all recovered organs come from non-white patients, even though people of color make up 60% of the wait list. Where this creates a problem is that often, but not always, a recipient's most likely match is from a donor of the same ethnicity, according to the National Office of Minority Health. And thankfully, it's easier than ever to join Michigan's organ donor registry, and I appreciate a great deal the work that Gift of Life is doing to specifically communicate the need for everyone to be a part of the list. And as someone, many of us, just completed our taxes recently, <laughs> I was also very gratified, thank you, Representative Brabeck, to see the ask made on our tax forms as well this year. Uh, so in addition to that ask or an ask being made in our branch offices, you can also just sign up today at michigan.gov slash organ donation or at the gift golm.org slash register. That's golm.org slash register. Or again, at any one of our self-service stations conveniently located around Michigan. 
Uh, and uh, this year, this new option uh, that we've just experienced really came from Representative Brabeck's leadership, but also thanks to Governor Whitmer, who signed this legislation into law, the Check Your Heart Act law, uh, which he signed last July, making Michigan the first state in the country to invite residents to add their names to the donor registry when they complete their state income tax forms. This new and convenient option has already taken effect and as I mentioned was on our forms this 2023 tax year. It was really great to see that. Uh, in 2023 was a record year for donations in our state as Gift of Life Michigan helped 578 people join the organ donor registry and become organ donors and 1,800 gave the, or just over 1,800 gave the gift of tissue last year, saving thousands of lives and healing tens of thousands more. So congratulations, Dory Dills, for your great team and your great leadership, because this is a 25% increase over the previous record setting year, which was 2022. <laughs> congratulations. So while organ donation is on an upward trend, unfortunately, Michigan's organ donor registry numbers are growing at their slowest pace in years. Currently, Michigan has 57% of the population registered, while other states have reached 70% of their population registered. In Michigan, 95% of donor registrations do come through our office of the Secretary of State, so our partnership and alignment in promoting the donor registry is more important than ever. Our work with Gift of Life Michigan is another step for, toward our goal, to meet Michiganders where they are and to look for new and innovative ways to serve the needs for the people of Michigan. And I'm really glad to be here at Grand Blake High School today uh, to help spread the message of organ donation to Michigan's teens and young adults. You can join the registry and speak with your family members about your wish to be an organ donor. And additionally, as April also celebrates National Minority Health Month, I want to reach out directly to Michigan's community of communities of color to invite them to take this opportunity to sign up to be a donor and provide a life-saving gift to someone in need. I'm grateful for our collaboration with Gift of Life, which helps us positively impact thousands of lives across the state of Michigan every year. And to all of those who have joined the Organ Donor Registry, registry thank you. And the many Michiganders in need, also thank you. To anyone who has not yet added your name to the registry, please do so today and make your legacy a life-saving one. Thank you. I believe now we are representing, or excuse me, introducing Representative Brayback. Make sure my glasses are on here. <laughs> Thank know, you. I'm struggling with that. I too. know. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I'm so excited to be here. Uh, my name is Felicia Brebeck. Uh, I'm one of the state representatives from the Ann Arbor area. Uh, and this morning, it is very fitting that we're at Grand Blank High School to talk about the importance of organ donation, eye, organ, and tissue. Thank you, Colin. Uh, donation, education. Thank you, Principal Frey, and to your team for welcoming us here this morning. It is stunning, uh, truly stunning. It's a beautiful campus. We know that organ donation literally saves lives. Literally, that's what we're doing here. All of us are committed to that, and that's why we're here today. And some of you have already chosen to be on those organ and tissue uh, and eye donation lists. And when you do, um, I forgot to bring my driver's license up here, but you have that heart, right, on your driver's license, uh, that coveted heart that we get when we sign up for, uh, for to be on that list. Um, and we're so grateful to the folks who have already chosen to do that. I mean, what an amazing gift. But we're here today because you, young people, uh, throughout the state need to learn more about organ donation and tissue donation before you decide what you're going to do. And right now, what happens is young people aren't given any formal education about organ donation until after, after you're officially asked about that organ donation question at the secretary's branch offices, frequently or conveniently located right, all over the state. <laughs> um, so right now, what happens is that question is asked for the first time again when you go to get your permit. right? But currently, young folks, they get about 10 minutes of preparation in segment two of driver's ed, uh, and that happens after you get your permit. Right? So you're asked a question, and then you're given the education. So it doesn't make a lot of sense. Our daughter literally started driver's ed training last night. Uh, and so I was like, okay, so tell me all about it. What's happening? You know, when you're gonna learn about you know, organ donation and education. Uh, and so 
what we have done uh, with Gift of Life and the whole team at Gift of Life uh, is we have some legislation. It's House Bill 5174, and that would require that a classroom hour of organ, eye, and tissue donation education is taught during your ninth grade year. So that way, many of you who choose to take driver's ed then have that knowledge before you are formally asked that question, do you wish to be on that donation list? And it just makes sense to me that you receive that necessary education in school and you can have, you can make that decision having been well informed and you know what it means to sign up and be a part of that list. And when you do decide to join that organ donation list, you will be a part of a group of Michiganders who have decided to help one another and to literally save one another's lives. I mean, what an amazing gift to do, right? And right now, as many people have talked about, there are almost 2,500 Michiganders who are waiting for that transplantation to save their lives. And we have the opportunity to help. So when you decide you know, to, to add your name to the list, and you are, you are helping folks not only throughout our state, but sometimes outside of our state, you are literally giving the gift of life. So our hope is to pass this bill so that young people can learn about organ, eye, and tissue donation right here in school before they are formally asked that question. After all, it's here in school where you learn to take in information, where you evaluate it, and then you make a decision, right? It's where you're really learning how to critically think, right? And so we want to be part of that. So we, well, we hope, here's what we hope, three, three things. We hope that you'll join us in supporting this bill to educate our high school students so that they can make well-informed decisions. We hope that our young people have the opportunity to learn about eye, tissue, and organ donation before they are asked that question formally for the first time. And finally, we hope that organ donation, eye donation, and tissue donation, and ultimately saving lives right here in Michigan can become a part of the learning that takes place in all of our schools throughout the state. Thank you so much for letting me be here this morning. I get so excited about all of this. So <laughs> I'm just so grateful to be here. So thank you so much. But I now have the distinct pleasure of introducing Heather Willing, who is one of our illustrious health educators right here at Grand Blank High School. Welcome, Heather. Thank you very much. Thank you. thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to be here today. Um, as so many have already said, this is one of the best places to be, <laughs> to be a part of Gift of Life. Um, about four, well, so first of all, I'm Heather Willing. I'm a health educator. I see about 400 of our freshmen every single year. About four years ago, I got a wonderful email that came into my inbox from Shalanda from Gift of Life asking if I was interested for her to come in. And I had never really thought about including organ donation into my curriculum. It was kind of just something that I, I had very little knowledge of. And I thought, well, yes, let's take this opportunity. So within the first hour of her being there, not only did she change my life, she changed the 40 students that were in my classroom. Every single eye was on her. No sleeping, no <laughs> phones out. I mean, literally eyes glued. She brought excitement. She brought passion. You could tell she had a gift for this organization, and she was here to share it. Um, so I had students that shared their personal stories. It brings me to tears. One of my students shared that his mom was alive because of a kidney donation. Um, and the amount of students that raised their hands to share their own personal stories was enough for every single semester, Shalanda, to be the first of, when are you coming in? Like, <laughs> let's get this going. Um, and it's my favorite day of health education of the semester. Um, also, during my lunch break that day, I became an organ donor. And I sat in alarm. <laughs> in my phone to the minute I picked up my kids, how do you feel about this? Like, I think you should be an organ donor. Um, so my 12 and 14 year old, are they're both organ donors as well, um, which is just an amazing feeling. Um, as many of you have said, the program needs to start younger. Um, when they come in as new drivers, they have so much on their brains. They are not thinking about 
being an organ donor, they're thinking about like, when am I going to get the keys to buy my mm -hmm. new car sitting out <laughs> in the driveway? Um, and so my awesome role as an educator is to not only bring Shalanda in, but to reiterate this gift that we have as humans. It is the best gift that you could give to save other people's lives. Um, I have a personal friend who just unfortunately lost her son to a respiratory infection. The only thing that's getting her through as a mom is the fact that she, her son has helped others stay alive. So, um, like I said, it's, it's the best thing we can do as humans. Um, so when my students come into my class, they are 14 and 15 years old. Uh, they have been gifted the knowledge. We do not push anything, but we share the facts. We share what organ donation actually is. We dispel myths and um, all the rumors that are out there. And we just have that opportunity, 400 students sitting in front of us to share what organ donation really is and how they can, as a 14 and 15 year old, be a hero. And that is in itself an amazing opportunity that we get to have. So, Shalanda will be a key role of my class until forever. <laughs> and when I retire, I will make sure that she is passed on to the next teacher um, and trying to get her into as many classes as we can and sharing to all the schools around us how important it is that she gets to their health programs as well. So thank you so much for allowing me to come today and talk. And um, Shalanda, thank you again for everything you've brought into my classes. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. What a, what a wonderful testament to our education program, really. We appreciate you so much for, for bringing us in. So as we wrap up today, I have a few calls of action for all of us and all of Michiganders. Number one, please, please sign up in the registry. You've heard all the good reasons why to do that today and join the four and a half million people who've already said yes to organ and tissue and eye donation. If you have questions, if you need additional information, certainly our website is a good place to go. You can contact our office, but our website is golm.org, and there's a lot of great information that helps dispel some of those myths. Um, our preference would be that students learn that from us and not TikTok or X or <laughs> wherever else they might get their information. Um, if you're a high school student and you have already registered, again, we appreciate it. And most importantly, go home and talk to your families about it. Talk about what you attended today and that what you're part of in this bigger, bigger organization and talk to your parents and your guardians. It's, it's important to have a family discussion so that they know what your wishes are. If you're a parent in the audience, um, the act of checking that box is one of the first adult decisions that your teenager is gonna have an opportunity to make. And as Heather said, our role as adults and parents is to make sure that they have the information that they need to make the right decision for themselves. So consider talking to your child about that decision. If you're a registered donor and you have that heart on your license, share that with your child, why it's important to you. And more importantly, if they have questions or concerns about it, help them find that information so that they too can sign up in the registry. Rest assured, however, that when, God forbid, something happens to a child that's under the age of 18, the parents are still brought into that decision. But I've, I've witnessed firsthand how um, comforting and guiding it is for parents to know that this was something that their child wanted to do and they're able to honor that wish and it becomes um, really something that uh, adds to their story and to their journey um, when they uh, experience such tremendous grief. If you're a teacher in the room, please invite us um, for an All of Us presentation. You've heard great things about it. We have the cart here, and I know our staff would love to show you what that's all about. Um, it's, it's, it's just incredible. It is an award-winning program, and we're very, very proud of it. Um, but also talk to your fellow educators. Uh, right now, without the legislation in place, our effort to get into a school is a grassroots effort. And we need that um, opportunity, that invitation, to uh, be brought into the classrooms. And so if you're an educator and you know other health uh, educators or, or biology or science teachers that might welcome us into the classroom, 
Uh, Shalanda has lots of room on her schedule. <laughs> we have other Shalandas. Um, but please do, please consider that. Um, and if you're in the room today and you're not registered, um, certainly uh, Nikki is in the back of the room. She has a laptop, she's ready to go. Um, and just as a reminder, the many ways that you can now get into the re registry, the majority of which is through the Secretary of State's office, when business is conducted there, through our website at golm.org. Um, certainly the tax forms uh, was an enormous gain this year, although it's a little late if you haven't signed up on that yet. <laughs> um, but I just, uh, and as a final point, I just want to um, comment on the tax forms. That's a really good example of uh, when the question's posed out there, how many more people check the box. And uh, we got some data through, I think, mid-March, and 70,000 people had already checked that box. And the busiest weeks of, of tax filing, if you're like me and file on April 15th, were yet to come. So we expect that number to double. And many of those people are already registered, but almost 7,000 of them were not. And just getting that question out one more time is uh, proof that people do want to join the registry. They just need the opportunity to do so. And that's what this education bill will also provide us. So thank you all for being here. Thank you for hosting us at uh, this beautiful, beautiful complex and school. And um, thank you all again.